We look at God as someone being up there. Today, Mr. Van der Zom's class is getting here. a lesson Growing not normally in taught in God. high schools How anymore. No, us. it's not reading, so writing, or love, arithmetic. The topics at hand, God, love and compassion. Love is by loving others. Right? And soon, so these students doing, will have the opportunity to put what they've learned to the test as they really take the trip of a lifetime to one of the poorest countries in Latin America. For justice in this situation. Now, Mr. Van der Zom might look familiar to some of you. Over the years, we've brought you several stories on TED and his Wells of Hope campaign in Guatemala. From his campaign to purchase a drilling rig so that he could dig wells in the Central American country's rural areas, to his Packs of Hope campaign, where he encourages Canadians to donate a new backpack filled with school supplies to the needy children of Guatemala. For the past nine years, he, his wife, and five children have committed their lives and resources to digging wells, building schools, and installing water irrigation systems in some of the most rural areas of the South American country. Their number one concern has always been the people of Guatemala and their desperate need for clean drinking water. Maggie, there's nothing more moving that, that will bring, literally bring me to tears is um, coming across a funeral procession, coming down a dirt path where a mom, mom, the women carry everything on their head. They carry buckets of water on their head. They carry the firewood on their head. And then to witness a mom carrying a tiny casket on her head of a little child she brought into the world with much pain. And then this woman having to carry the child to the grave as well. And what is painful is that this woman carries the guilt knowing this child died due to the water she was feeding it. What a headbanger it must be for a mom. But I have no other water, yet I'm killing my child. <laughs> And if my child doesn't drink, my child dies as well. And the most difficult for me is I know I could have done and can do something about it. Why was I not there for this mother? And so whenever I see the funeral, I bring it home personally and said, that child was Christ calling out, I thirst. Did I answer that call? Many who know the Van der Zom family will tell you that they have answered the call many times over. They've mortgaged their house twice and recently taken out a half a million dollar loan in order to purchase a new drilling rig for the Wells of Hope mission, after their previous rig had to finally be put out to pasture. We raised over half the money. We felt there's no need to make the poor wait any longer. Let us buy the equipment and we will take out a loan to pay for what is remaining. And that's what we did, Maggie. We bought the drilling equipment. We have an outstanding loan of $500,000. So we're, we're better than halfway there. The rig is on its way to Guatemala as we speak. And uh, the rest is in God's hands. Uh, we will work diligently to fundraise for the remaining funds. But in the meantime, the rig is on its way to answer the cry of those who thirst. And it's those cries that have kept Ted, his family, and a group of volunteers going back each year as well as running fundraising events here at home as well, so that the work can continue. But as a teacher, Ted wanted his students to witness the need firsthand as well. Uh, my frustration as a religion teacher was that after class, the bell went, the kids dashed out, and then everything we talked about uh, left with them leaving as far as it, it stayed behind in the classroom. And uh, I was very challenged where a lot of the kids coming from different arenas of life, different environments, different backgrounds, many could not relate with the passion and the, the desire I had to bring them to Christ. And they couldn't understand the stories because it was so far out of their concept of life and what life was all about. So after several years of working on the mission field, Ted and his wife Miriam decided to incorporate their work with Wells of Hope and his day-to-day -day job as a teacher. They presented the idea to the Catholic District School Board, and now, four years later, students are given the opportunity to help in Guatemala for three months. It's not and Mr. Van Der Zom's well. students would finally see what, what it is like to, to live in poverty day in and day out. Where now high school students can actually step out of the classroom okay, and have a life experience that no textbook could ever teach them. 
And we believe that these kids will meet Christ in the face of poverty. But while the students will still be working towards earning six credits in order to graduate, the lessons they will learn, Ted says, can't be taught in any classroom. They will be working with orphanages, will be working in medical facilities, medical clinics, will be uh, drilling wells, um, distributing water. Uh, we're going to involve them in all aspects of, uh, of service. But how do the students feel about this three-month journey they're about to take? After a long selection process, 12 students from several Catholic secondary schools in the Niagara region were chosen for the trip. Among the group are 17 and 18-year-olds Julianne, TJ, and Olivia. So guys, tell me why you were interested in being a part of this program. I figured, why not? Why not go down to Guatemala? It's three months out of my long life that I'll live, and <laughs> I want to help people out. So I figured the door was open for me, and might as well walk on through it. When I was in elementary school, I remember Mr. Vanderzom coming in and stuff, and it just really excited me. And I just remembered watching all the uh, the slideshows and stuff. So that's what I wanted to do. I want to like somehow make a difference, like in someone's life, like even if it's just something really small. And it's that desire to help their community, both locally and abroad, that excites John Caraco, director of education for the Niagara Catholic District School Board. Well, social justice is uh, part and parcel of Catholic education. And we're rooted in helping our needy brothers and sisters around the world. Our students are those citizens of our world. And whether we help here in Niagara through out of the coal programs, I mean, a while back, uh, we served uh, a dinner to over 800 individuals in our communities just because it's what our students wanted to do. Whether it's that or building homes for needy families or taking this uh, outside of the comfort zone of students and to places around the world. I mean, by chance, we were born here, but we need to help our brothers and sisters in need. That is why John Decker, the vice chairman of the Niagara District School Board, says long-term trips like this one to Guatemala needs to continue. As the schools look at how this will impact not just the students on the trip, but future generations as well. They're going to come back with something that, that's more precious than, than just seeing a country or going on a vacation. This is something that's going to live with them. It's going to, it's going to instill something in their children and uh, it's going to continue. And, and I believe that's the way we, it has to go. Uh, we, we, we continue the gospel teachings and we do what we can uh, for our kids in the future. As for now, the team is set to be in Guatemala for the next three months. A true lesson, Ted says, on love, compassion, and our role here on earth. My greatest hope is that they see the big picture and that God is calling them to greatness. And their greatness does not rest in secular terms. Their greatness rests in how radical are they willing to love their neighbor as themselves. That is where their greatness rests. And if, if they can bring around um, economic success and being a good athlete and, and all the things that w the world deems as greatness, if they could bring that around and give God His glory for that greatness, I, I believe then um, these kids will be happy no matter what life throws at them. Our, our number one In St. Catharines, Ontario, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.